Alrighty guys, still dealing with these sequences. Now we're moving and focusing on the geometric sequence, starting off with explicit geometric formula. Here's our learning objectives for today. I can create the explicit geometric formula and I can use the explicit geometric formula to find any term. What is a geometric sequence? It, a geometric sequence, the ratio between consecutive terms is constant. That's why it's called the common ratio. Basically, the pattern that follows this list of numbers is multiplying or dividing. So take a look at this quick uh, example to just remind us. Determine if it's geometric, and if so, identify the common ratio. You have one, negative six, 36, negative 216. This is geometric because it's multiplying by negative six every time. Take a look at this next one. You have two, then four, then six, then eight. This is not geometric. There's no common ratio. There's a common difference. It's arithmetic. You're adding two every time. So quick reminder. Now take a look at our explicit geometric formula, guys. It's actually very similar to the explicit arithmetic formula where you have your first term, you have your uh, common, your pattern, and then you have the n minus one equals a with n. So the differences is based purely off of the pattern that goes with geometric sequences. With arithmetic sequences, it's adding or subtracting every time. So <clears throat> we add, the first uh, term to our common difference times n minus one, because multiplication is just repeated addition. This time, we don't have repeated addition, we have repeated multiplication. Repeated multiplication is exponents, it's powers of. So that's where this explicit formula comes from. It's repeating our common ratio and then it's also changed by timesing our first term. So first term times common ratio raised to the n minus one. The term we're looking for, minus one, is our exponent. Let's do a few examples. Take a look at this one. It gives us the first term. It says a1 is equal to seven. It gives us the common ratio. It says it's one third. Ooh, tricky. This really means dividing by three. Now, to come up with the explicit formula for this one, we just simply plug in the values that we know. We don't know what a n is because it's not asking for um, any nth term. It just wants us to come up with the formula. We know what a one is, so we could plug that seven in for a one. And we know what the common ratio is, one third. So we could plug one third in for r. If we do so, we get seven times one third raised to the n minus one power. Boom, explicit formula. We can use this to find any term in a geometric sequence. <clears throat> Finding the first five terms, guys, just plugging a one in, then plugging a two, a three, a four, and a five, and using a calculator to simplify this thing here. Seven times one third, to the one minus one power, that's just seven. And then we're dividing by three every time. So seven uh, over three, seven over nine, seven over 27, seven over 81. First five terms. Let's move on. Taking a look at another example. This time we're actually gonna find the term using the explicit formula. You have find the 19th term in the sequence of 11, 33, 99, 297. This is geometric because we're multiplying to get to the next number. The common ratio, what we're multiplying by every time, is positive 3. So we know what our first term is. It's 11. We know what the common ratio is. We're timesing by 3 every time. And we know what n is. It's 19. So let's plug them into our formula. We have a of 19 equals my first term 11 times 3 to the 19 minus 1 power. When you're simplifying 
and you have exponents, you have to take care of the exponents first. So we're going to do 19 minus 1 first, which makes 18. 3 to the 18th power is a very large number. And then that times 11 makes it an even larger number. We get 4,261,626,379. Jeez. This is especially where you'll notice using the explicit formula is a lot easier to find a certain term than just going step by step by step. Because we could have just continued this pattern and got all the way up to the 19th term just by times in three to everything. But look how huge this number gets. I don't want to do that. So instead, I could just use the formula, plug it in, use my calculator, and get myself an answer. Let's keep moving. That's uh, another one for you. Find the 10th term of this sequence. You have one, two, four, eight. Using our explicit sequence formula, we need to know what the first term is. Okay, this is a nice one. It's just one. We need to know what the common ratio is. Our common ratio is two. Times in by two every time. So now let's use that to plug it in. I have one times two to the 10 minus one power. I want you to simplify this thing, guys. Uh, grab a calculator or just open up a new tab. Get a calculator going. Tell me what the 10th term is. All righty. So 10 minus one makes nine. Two to the ninth power times one equals 512. Did you get 512? Hopefully. Let's try another one. Use an explicit formula. This time, again, finding the 10th term, but here's our sequence. 5, 25, 125, 625. Oh, man. Using our formula, we have A1 times R to the N minus 1 power, where N is going to be 10 because we want the 10th term. A1 is my first term, which is 5. The common ratio. Can you see what we're multiplying by every time? Our common ratio is 5. We're times in by 5 every time. So let's plug it into our formula. 5 times 5 to the 10 minus 1 power. <clears throat> and let's simplify this thing to get the 10th term. 10 minus 1 makes 9. 5 to the 9th power times 5. Actually, this turns out to be 5 to the 10th power because the bases are the same. But you get 9,765,000. 1,625, 10th term. Hopefully it's starting to click a little more. Let's do a different one though. This one's a little trickier. You have the 10th term again, but you have one, negative six, 36, negative 216. Yeesh. Using our formula, what's the first term? First term is one. What's our common ratio? Oh, it's negative six. Because our sign is changing every time, positive to negative, to positive to negative. So let's plug it in. I have 1 times negative 6 to the 10 minus 1 power. You simplify, see if you get the same answer I do. 10 minus 1 makes 9, negative 6 to the 9th power times 1 makes negative 10,077,696. After those examples and the stuff that we tried, if it's still not making sense, feel free to email me. But we're going to continue working on these geometric sequences until they click. Talk to you guys later.